Jungle is, uh, I'm proud to call him a friend. Um, and he is uh, Sami Shaman from Sapmi, which is now known as Northern uh, Norway, Northern Sweden, Northern Finland, and then Russia. Um, you've had uh, quite the quite the journey. Um, really interesting path, you know, born into the Sami culture and in one of the most remote areas of northern um sweden what is now right um or <laughs> yeah yeah well uh both sweden and norway <laughs> yes and um you uh, went to kind of discover your culture uh rediscover the spirituality of your culture by training to be a shaman in the amazon and yep. for seven years you trained and came came back uh, started your own uh, plant medicine center and in got involved in a, a legal battle uh, with with the plant medicines and helped legalize ayahuasca and San Pedro in Norway and Sweden and and now you're kind of and correct me if I'm wrong but you've uh, you've, you've stepped back a little bit from the plant plant medicine, administration and into really yeah being part of the land being part of uh diving back into your culture you know maybe getting back into reindeer herding um in the in the future but but uh this is uh quite the journey <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah 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 so um just really excited i always love our conversations and really excited about our talk today uh about um yeah like uh yeah just uh this 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 topic that has been really kind of i don't know i've been uh, obsessive about it in the, the past couple of years uh ever since i started uh this this path into um yeah just doing tours and visiting indigenous cultures around the world and um kind of finding my own place even in america here where you know i'm living on land that was stolen at, at uh at one time and um just I, 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 and, and just kind of like what that, that means to me and what it means 200 years or, you know, it's only 150 years later, you know, here, um, it's still kind of happening to you guys. Um, but, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, I, I guess one of the epiphanies that brought me into this was, was in, in the schools in America were taught you know, in our history, you know, the, the European peoples came to America and then there were the days of the cowboys and the Indians and the wars that happened then. And then now this is how it is. And that was the history. And here it is now, you know, and the epiphany I had after starting this journey was, okay, the reservations are still here. You know, Native Americans are still on reservations. They're in really most reservations or a lot of them are in really bad shape not all of them um and this is like a this is a now problem not a not a in the past problem and so i think um the world waking up to this or you know realizing that we've been brainwashed this in this in the propaganda of the just kind of the american nations and i think most kind of empirical nations and yeah, waking up to that fact and and exploring kind of what what does that mean for us now and where do we go from that? So that's kind of what led us to this uh, this topic today of kind of discovering our indigenous selves in a way. So um, I guess that's the the last bit of uh, introduction. I'll shut up after this, but like uh, uh, was leading to this this uh another epiphany is that at one point you know we were all indigenous it, just for a lot of european 
settlers and immigrants it was longer ago than for than for a lot of tribes on the planet that so we're much more separated from that part of ourselves so i feel like there is a a, a search um for people to find that that part of themselves in their relationship with the planet like we've become so disconnected that 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 we're searching to reconnect you know reconnect to the earth reconnect to our tribe reconnect to you know what does that all mean you know so so it's uh it's it's good to speak with someone today in a live setting um that is closer to that part of themselves, I'd say, with you, Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think about what I've said so far? Yeah, it's uh, something very relevant and something that I encounter a lot. Uh, like, um, I've been uh, around to different places in Europe to uh, festivals and other events as a uh, speaker. And, uh, well, invited as a wisdom keeper uh, doing different kind of things. And uh, something that uh, that comes up a lot in this is that uh, this interest of, uh, of indigenous uh, philosophy, indigenous culture, indigenous way of thinking. When uh, I was a kid, this wasn't so interesting for the outside world. It well, to some people it was, but it was more from a historical perspective. But uh, what have happened during my lifetime is that uh, a lot of people have started to search for it because it started to become valuable in a way that it wasn't. Uh, 20 years ago uh, like I've been uh, a lot in the Netherlands and uh, also having uh, seminars for uh, like uh, the corporate world and so because uh, people have realized that this uh, this knowledge is about to disappear it is disappearing hour by hour mm -hmm. and uh, it have uh, become apparent to a lot of people around the world that uh, the way the direction that we've been heading for uh, yeah at least the last hundred years uh, is not working out we, we are heading towards a catastrophe so people are starting to search for uh, for an alternative and find out where things went wrong and uh, like I mentioned, the corporate world, they have also started to understand that it's uh, no longer profitable to uh, ignore this and not think about this. So, so it's something that has become uh, more and more relevant, uh, yeah, for every year. Yeah. Yeah, I think the uh, the global yeah global nature crisis around the world is waking people up realizing that the companies can't you know we just don't have infinite resources and we need to have a better relationship with our planet that's probably waking up a lot of people to to uh to this this change i mean i'm not i'm not one to totally you know say all technology all advancement all all is bad you know i think although i do kind of struggle with with mining and like and digging into the earth for our, for our minerals and and uh in in order for these event advancements so i yeah i kind of struggle with that that balance of of yes technology is good in its way and i don't i don't think going totally back to you know no advancement no no technology i don't think that's really the answer but there's also what we're doing right now is not the answer in a way. So I can see how that's waking up people. Yeah, I came to, to a very similar uh, realization because uh, 
when I was uh, growing up as a kid, uh, I was uh, thinking that uh, technology was uh, something evil because it uh, destroys the nature. And I basically saw humanity as a parasite on an otherwise perfect world. And the more modern an invention was, the more evil uh, okay. I deemed it to be. And uh, yeah, and, and back then my idea was this, that we have to go back and, and live like we did a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, then during my time in, uh, in uh, the Amazon, in, in the Peruvian Amazon, I was uh, learning a lot and like one of the outcomes from uh, from uh, learning shaman, shaman, more shamanism uh, is uh, that I became a healer and uh, you cannot heal what you don't love. So um, I had uh, I had to change my my view on humanity. Uh, well, it was something that sort of happened automatically over time there. Uh, and uh, also I realized that uh, a bit about how the universe works, that uh, everything, there is a movement uh, all the time in everything. And you cannot uh, stop the movement and you, you cannot uh, go go back you cannot mm -hmm. reverse you always have to go forwards mm -hmm. but the question is how to go forwards and in what direction mm -hmm. and modern technology has done a lot of good things uh, so uh, so modern technology uh, i wouldn't say is evil as it did when i was a kid but the problem, I would say, with modern technology is that it has been uh, developed and applied without consulting with uh, indigenous uh, uh, wisdom, uh, like uh, what sort of uh, technology do we need what sort of technology does really serve us and uh, how should this technology be applied mm -hmm. and all of this like uh, evolution have been going on for a long time without listening to any of the old wisdom mm -hmm. so interesting uh, i mean so this this I was I was having a great conversation with a friend um just yesterday um and we were talking about the difference between kind of uh success uh and and like narcissists and yeah not narcissists I guess and and just how how successful a lot of narcissists are and it's um part of it is that they are not really in their own way towards doing what they want to do and they don't let others get in the way of what they want to do you know they often don't they, 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 it's like a person without obstructions and everybody can be successful or create what they want um it's just it's just narcissists don't really have as many roadblocks to that <laughs> and so it's almost like society has become narcissistic in a way or maybe capitalism itself and, and just moving forward without uh concern or without regard for what is being damaged along the way which is kind of interesting because you know you can you can say I, and it, it comes to this gray line again like you can say that's the advancement has 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 moved forward without the shackles of being humble or or concerned for others um and you know they're able we're able to push the boundaries in that way but at the same time like 
at what point do you start hurting yourself doing that or hurting others? Yeah, I mean, you end up hurting yourself because, you know, because. Yeah, that, that's. You're separating uh, that, that's, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's something uh, very relevant that uh, that I think, well, uh, people more and more people do start to realize this that um, uh, like uh, if if you uh, how to put it now. Uh, uh, like what is life? because in in the end there is only one life we are all part of this life and life is eternal life doesn't have a beginning or an end mm -hmm. so if uh, if you do things for your own winning without concern for uh, others or the future uh, then it's a matter or it, the way it has been is that then it's a matter about how good hearted you are. Uh, do you think about other people or not? Do you think about your children and other people's children and so? Mm -hmm. But what starts to become more evident to more and more people is that you're actually going to lose yourself on this because your life is not really going to end when your body expires so you're actually by stealing from future generations you're actually stealing from yourself and this is something that starts to dawn on more and more people mm -hmm. it's a good workaround for the <laughs> <laughs> For the the always thinking of yourself and and helping others by thinking of yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, interesting. Um, yeah. With the uh, your 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 realizations in the Amazon, I feel like I kind of had the opposite. Not that I was totally not not the opposite, but just the 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 other end of the spectrum. Because when I was in there and i i remember doing during one of my is ceremonies seeing the mother of the forest move through the forest and like and and how it just plant life grew all around it as it was moving through the forest and it really connected me to to the land and to the the yeah the the, the spirit of the land as well and so it's like you learn to love humanity or technology and then I learned to love the forest so it's like this kind of coming from both sides to meet in the middle um yeah yeah like uh, what I realized during this time is that uh, like about humanity because I started to see and understand uh, the spirits of uh, us humans and then I realized that we are actually really beautiful and perfect beings capable of uh, living in complete harmony with uh, our surroundings and ourself. So uh, what's not to love? But uh, of course, then the question is, uh, why does the world uh, look the way it does why do we have all these problems with uh, destruction of the planet and uh, yeah. war and criminality and uh, economic system that creates poverty well it's because uh, we are at a quite low evolutionary state as uh, humans i would uh, go as far as to say that um, today we are not real humans we are uh, prototypes of uh, real humans so uh, if uh, we collectively could evolve into uh, true humans what we are meant to be 
then uh, these problems will uh, will fall away. They they will uh, dissolve. Mm. So that's and what that you mean by better. prototypes is like we're still kind of in this experimental phase of what consciousness is to be like in a in an animal. <laughs> Yes, we we are not uh, fully developed yet, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think it's something that uh, it's something that we can do in uh, within our lifetime. It's uh, uh, I think a lot of people have, but uh, it has to spread and happen on a on a more collective level, it's not enough that uh, a few individuals uh, throughout the history have gone through this and uh, managed to become real humans. Mm. It's like uh, when I was studying there in, in Peru and I was um, understanding more and more what it uh, means to be a shaman and uh, basically what it means is to be a human uh, and uh, that's uh, that's not the easiest thing that's something that we have to we have to work for it we have to do something to become how human. do you think people are not human well uh, same as for example uh uh, a larva becomes a butterfly. That's that's a quite uh, yeah obvious. But I mean all um, and 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 I'd say that this is what uh, separates humans uh, a bit from uh, other animals on on. Uh, on this planet because uh, animals are kind of uh, uh, set in in their way that they they are perfect in 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 their own way uh, for example an, an animal can uh, learn tricks uh, a fox can uh, can learn how to open a, a closed container for example but uh, a fox will always be a fox. It, it uh, will never change its way of thinking. And this is where, uh, where humans are somewhat different because uh, we have the, the possibility to, to change our, uh, our way of thinking, our inner uh core uh, like uh, essence like uh, uh, i mean there are speculations about if, if we can maybe change our own dna or uh, access more about it how that technically works is not really that interesting to me because i kind of have a notion that that it works so so, so uh, because a lot of humans ha have changed their life completely like uh, some people have done uh, hideous uh, crimes and then one day they just stop and uh, change the course of their life 180 degrees mm -hmm. this is what uh, humans can do we, we have this capacity yeah it's pretty beautiful um do you think um i i feel like part of our disconnection to each other the planet um came about from religion, Christianity, um, Adam and Eve separating ourselves from the other animals on earth, even though, yeah, there, there obviously is differences, but, but like a lot of cultures practice animism and, um, worshiping 
animals and animal spirits. Um, do you think a part of that has um, played a role in in this? Uh, I mean, would you say it's a a, a de evolution from mm -hmm. where we began? Yeah. Yes, I, I think that that's uh, very much the case because uh, uh, religion, if you have uh, spirituality, if you have connection, then there is no room for religion. Because if uh, you're in connection with uh, God and uh, like hear the the thoughts of, of God. You 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 know what to do in, in certain situations. Like, like in the Amazon, somebody described it very well. Like he could hear God's voice tell him to go hunt to today and go uh, walk in uh, this direction uh, because uh, your family needs food. And uh, now you need to uh, to build a house for your family. So then uh, uh, take uh, this tree uh, and not that tree uh, and things like that. So like when you are in this connection, then uh, religion, there is no space for it. The, the only way that the religion can have a place is if that connection is lost because uh, religion is a construct to uh, reach uh, God so it means that you have lost the connection because mm -hmm. religion is, is uh, in best case like the idea behind it is that it's a ladder to connect, um, but um, but it, it also doesn't... kind of inherently teaches that you, I mean, it, maybe it's teaching from a space, you know, it's like where you aren't connected, and so it almost needs that disconnection to continue itself. So yes, so... yes, that, that's the thing, because if you would achieve connection, then uh, the religion is dead. Uh, so uh, so yes and and uh, the religions uh, that we have in the world that they are uh, usually well the big ones uh, that uh, I know about uh, they are quite uh, complicated uh, and contains a lot of uh, rules and a lot of uh, um punishments and uh, it's quite fear-based that uh, either you go to a good place or a bad place depending on how good you are at keeping to those rules mm -hmm. and those rules many times uh, is about uh, things that goes against human nature like um, it's about restricting uh, love for example so it's kind of a set system that uh, you can't really uh, manage you, you are going to fail uh, because you are failing even even if you only fail in your thoughts Mm -hmm. So that that is bound to happen. So the religions, when they were made, uh, I'm pretty sure that the the, um, the 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 goal with them was to prevent people from achieving connection, because uh, some people believed that they would uh, gain something from uh, people not being connected mm -hmm. so then you con then you make this construct uh, like a maze uh, that doesn't lead anywhere and um, be because 
I think we all humans, we have a spark within ourselves that uh, we know that there is more to life and more to this world than uh, uh, than um, what you can the see physical, touch. yeah, than the physical things we can see and touch. And we all have this uh, some some degree of yearning to know where do we come from and where are we going. Mm -hmm. So to stop people from uh, pursuing this, to explore this, then these uh, mazes were constructed, mm -hmm. and uh, it, then it was decided: okay, if you if you really have to go searching for this, then yes, you can do, but only this way, because that way the authority would be sure that you wouldn't get anywhere. I mean, I I do feel like this this search for kind of being indigenous or I mean, I don't want to pretend that I'm a native to any place. I, it's weird because I'm you know I'm American and a lot of America has is maybe the most disconnected in the whole world. I mean, or at least the most uprooted, you know, we've all immigrated here. And I mean, my, even, even in my lifetime, my family moved from my, my father was from the West coast. My mom was from the East coast. We even, when I was five, we moved to the middle of the country. And so like, I never had roots. And like I was talking about earlier, that part of that is, is I think there's there's benefits in shedding tradition, you know, and um, just kind of the going into, you know, the improvement of it, technology advancement, like there's good things that that into, you know, just advancement, basically, and and unshackling yourself. Um, <clears throat> But at the same time, it's like I have had this search for, for that, that deeper connection with the planet. And maybe this, this, yeah, I mean, I, I really like how you put that as far as knowing God is, is being able to be intuitive and be in touch with the plants and the animals around you in order to live your life. And and it's almost like a indigenous spirituality in a way. And so, mm -hmm. so that, that, uh, that's why it's, you know, part of the, that, that topic today of, of discovering our indigenous selves. It's interesting because in this country, you know, to say that, or, or for this would be a very controversial topic. It is a very controversial to 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 like see seek my indigenous self on on this land. You know, like when you know the tribe was kicked out of here 150 years ago, they'd be like, "What are you talking? You know, this is uh that's that's uh terrible." Um. So, but it's it might be kind of backwards in a way because yeah, we need to connect with the plants and the animals and even the people before in order to like kind of help heal this this wound uh it's it's kind of like what is the answer so it's interesting that that you've said that the connection to the earth is that spirituality um yeah yeah and i mean we all were indigenous uh i mean at one once upon a time, yeah. we, we all have indigenous roots. Yes. Uh, so uh, somewhere uh, most of the population on this planet lost this uh, indigenous yeah. uh, indigenousness or, or mm -hmm. what to call it. Do you feel and, like it's uh, Im important for people to, I don't, it's kind of cool with the DNA testing and to like see where you're from and, and, uh, or where your genetics were from, do you feel like it's important for people to to visit or those places that their ancestors came from? Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a good thing. I think that is something that can um, 
trigger uh, things and uh, jug memories of some sort uh, mm -hmm. maybe not even conscious memories but it uh, it uh, triggers something yeah uh, like cellular uh, yeah. memory <laughs> yes yeah something mm -hmm. like that yeah yeah so yeah i think that's a very good thing mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty fascinating that that when you are an embryo in your when your grandmother was pregnant with you or sorry when your grandmother was pregnant with your mother you were already the building blocks for you were in your mother in her like her reproductive cells so it's like you existed in your grandmother before i mean that's just the, the mm -hmm. physical, physical part of it it probably go, even goes beyond that as far as what you're experiencing her life and, and going on to connect and and you know learn the lessons of your family going forward but um yeah i i think traveling to those places is is pretty good <laughs> or it can it's like it's not totally necessary but but well yeah yeah uh, and I, I think uh this with indigenousness it's hard hard word i don't even know if it is a word <laughs> indigenousness <laughs> But um, I think it can, I'd say it can go both ways uh, because um, one reason why I went to the Amazon, because uh, I am indigenous, officially I'm Sami. So uh, what I was seeing when I was growing up was this how, uh, because what makes a people indigenous? Uh, and I'd say that is this connection, the connection to the land that they live on, or uh, and uh, that is, uh, in a sense, a connection to God, cosmos, or whatever uh, you want to call it. It goes through the land and, and through the through your tribe, through your community. And uh, what I was seeing is that was that indigenous people were losing their indigenousness because um, like uh, a lot of tribes indigenous tribes all over the world they, they have been uh, like my own people but many others have been exposed to a heavy um, uh, Christian uh, missionary work uh, like in uh, in the case of my family history it included uh, uh, executions and uh, imprisonments and uh, burning and uh, stealing and a, lo a lot of these things so brainwashing so the the level of indigenousness i would say had been decreasing because what unites us as a people if i talk about my own people the sami people what is it that that, that unites all of us what do we all have in common as sami people well it is this uh, this connection with uh, with Sapmi, with this land, and we understand the land in uh, all sorts of ways. We can, uh, we know how to live in it. We can survive in it, mm -hmm. and we understand uh, the weather, the the wind, the climatic changes. We have over a hundred words for snow to describe different qualities of it. And when that gets replaced with uh, either uh, religion or uh, if you just uh, move away from spirituality like uh, atheism can uh, and and uh, um, uh, capitalism it can be whatever that brings you out of this mm -hmm. well are you really indigenous then 
uh, even if you're uh, genetically officially mm -hmm. are indigenous. Yeah. And that's what I was seeing that this uh, this indigenous root that uh, unites us all that that should be thick and strong. Mm -hmm. It was getting dangerously thin. Mm -hmm. So when uh, I was in my uh, teens and uh, early twenties, I was afraid that we was gonna cease to be an indigenous people. And that's uh, what uh, really pushed me to make this journey to the Amazon, because the Amazon was the last place on earth where I had any desire to go. <laughs> because I'm a child of the Arctic and I've been living apart from here. Uh, I've been living on northern Greenland and I love it here in the Arctic. But uh, this possibility that we were going to cease to be indigenous, that scared me so much that that scared me even more than the Amazon. Mm -hmm. So I went. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, I, I, I do think, yeah, that, that that really helps our connection by visiting other people connected to the planet. And, you know, we discover ways that we used to live, uh, ways that we can live, um, how other people do things, how other people have relationship. I mean, I love that. That's part of my kind of expanding my own consciousness is through travel, you know, just to open your eyes, like you get in a, in a rut of of where you live you know you you uh you stop looking around you or paying attention to the things around you um and uh when you travel you you're kind of forced to be open so um yeah it's interesting one of our other trips down to costa rica we had a native american girl come with us but she had completely lost her culture you know there was her grandmother was forced into a, uh, as a child, uh, into an assimilation school, and and yeah, ap apart from her skin color, you couldn't really tell that she was a Native American. But like, but our trip to to Costa Rica was was a a a a, a, con a reconnection you know, for her, you know, an attempt to reconnect with that. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating just kind of thinking about history and how empires slowly, slowly took over the world and, you know, and used their power to consume tribes and cultures and then fit them into, into how they viewed the world and and power kind of took over the world in a way, but it's, mm -hmm. but it is, uh, it is, it is good to see the interest in, in, in preserving culture and preserving, you know, s s preserving this relationship. And that excites me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So do you feel like that was, that was really interesting to hear about your kind of the, your fear of losing your indigenous miss <laughs> yeah. um um do you feel like that there was a time where you felt the most lost in a way was was about that time uh, yeah yes i think so mm -hmm. and uh it was uh, but it was more than a personal thing because uh it was also that i uh, feared for uh, my the, the whole of my people it wasn't just uh, me it was um, I, I was uh, worried that, that uh, there wouldn't be any more samis anymore yeah other than by name mm -hmm. it's like um, I mean I think most people know uh, that knows anything about Samis knows that we have uh, very colorful clothings 
uh, th this is uh, this is the sami clothing but it's not uh, really the the most colorful though uh, but um why do we have that because most people don't know why we have that but i seen pictures uh, of us in this uh, clothing and and uh, not even all samis knows why we have this and this is because um, uh, we we live basically from reindeer reindeer is uh, is our life source it's our life support uh, has been for uh, since the beginning of us uh, so uh, and we are most known for that we have uh, reindeer herding so that means that many times uh, we are deciding over uh, life and death over the reindeers and uh, then it is also our responsibility to make their life beautiful so that's why we dress in these colors and uh, some 10-15 uh, years ago i read in a science magazine that uh, the scientists have just uh, discovered that reindeer is the only deer related animal that can see colors but uh, wow. my ancestors knew that a long time wow. so uh, let's say that we would lose our land we would lose our way of living but uh, today it's so important uh, in in the uh, i don't know the to be politically correct that you you have to have the right to express your culture so okay so let's say in the future uh, we would lose that but people would still use the sami clothing as uh, for special uh, occasions as a way of showing the culture well the thing is that in that case it would be pointless because our clothing only have a meaning as long as we have reindeer herd mm -hmm. if you take that out that then then we lose it it's like um, many times uh, we think about uh, the old uh, norse culture like our neighbors the the norwegian and swedish people their heritage i mean they were indigenous once upon a time uh, and uh, they were colonized about a thousand years ago and uh, the the those their countries became uh, christian basically overnight uh, approximately a thousand years ago and what remains of their culture today and what remains of their language today well there is a few festivals a year where uh, people gather and uh, dress up in the same clothing style and uh, drink uh, homemade beer and throw axes and uh, that's about it mm -hmm. and that's i mean that that's a thousand years of colonization uh, for us we our colonization has been going on for uh, about uh, four or five hundred years depending how you see it but uh, 400 years um, more so we haven't uh, we still have uh, most of, of our things but our fear is that where will be we be in five or six hundred years from now will it be like that that uh, all that remains of the sami culture is that uh, there is a few festivals where we gather and dress in sami clothing and throw lasso on uh, a stick <laughs> oh man i mean um i will i want to reply to that i will I, i'm gonna invite other people to ask a question or if you want to put something in the chat then i can bring you on the video to ask a question but but I remember um, visiting when, when we visited you guys. Uh, 
that really struck me that that uh your relationship with um with the reindeer was so beautiful to me um and and the fact that yeah you dress the the reason that you dress so colorfully is to give the reindeer a beautiful life it's not for other people it's not for us that was, it's so cool um and yeah that was part of uh almost even part of i mean that's a whole other story is me coming there vegetarian and not not leaving vegetarian but um but in a way part of that or even all of that was from your relationship with the reindeer and the fact that you know the the Sierra's family by the way she says hi to everyone <laughs> she's who we're going to be visiting uh in June uh we're going to be doing another trip back up to the Sami people um and jungle is the the co-host uh but like the the reindeer herd that we stayed with like this herd has been in Sierra's family for we about 400 years about 400 years yeah 400 years <laughs> you know like they've lived together with the reindeer you know it's like this this uh and and they were happy uh that we were staying on the land because we were um just helping scare away uh eagles and lynx and bear that might be in the area during the calving season uh to protect their calves just by our presence there and uh so they've been protecting and maintaining this herd for 400 years and in turn the reindeer have been giving themselves and it's like this meiosis relationship uh they don't exist without each other and mm -hmm. yeah the the yeah the sami culture does not exist and yeah i mean the reindeer are helped you know by by this relationship and and in turn that the the reindeer meat that we had over the fire was like the best meat i think i've ever had in my life and i think part of it was that that relationship that care that that was so beautiful yeah yeah does anybody else have any questions or just enjoying the enjoying the talk <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. Um, what else do we have? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I love that, 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 that beautiful, yeah, that, that relationship. And I, and I think that, that the preservation of these cultures around the world, there's so many things that have been lost already. So, so hopefully there's this a space for preserving what there is left <laughs> it's crazy how many languages are disappearing around the world too and and the knowledge that's within the language and you know the how it's yeah mm -hmm. and, and what what we hear like, like as samis what we many times have a hard time making uh, the colonizing countries governments understand is that uh, our culture or the, the existence of us samis is 100% uh, tied to the land mm -hmm. because uh, like i said we have over a hundred words for snow uh, to describe different qualities of the snow uh, that you cannot learn in a classroom the only way you can learn that is that you have to spend a lot of time outside and you have to move around in the snow you have to ski in it and you have to observe how the snow affects the reindeers and how it affects uh, other uh, animal and plant life so only through that that takes years many years to to see these things only then these words gives any meaning so if we don't have the land uh, those hundred words uh, 100 plus words will disappear because they will no longer have a purpose so it it's really like like 
we cannot be separated from the land. Our culture uh, lives and dies with the land. Yeah. Yeah. I so, mean... like, like nowadays, like sometimes the the especially the Norwegian government is uh, very proud and actually teach in schools that uh, they are are. Uh, uh they used to be somewhat evil back in the days and uh tried to eradicate uh, our people mm -hmm. but uh, that time is over because uh, now the sami culture is fully accepted and you can uh, walk uh, on a street in the capital in oslo with sami clothing uh, without causing a scandal or being lynched or something like that. And uh, there is even uh, Sami music that gets played on the radio. But the thing is that at the same time... And that's significant we... because you told me that Sami music used to be illegal, right? It was... Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sami it was used, illegal music to used sing to the illegal. songs. Yeah, crazy. And and now it's allowed, so so that's something that uh, Norway is taking a lot of pride in that that uh, it has changed and Norway changed and Norway is so accepting of our culture and and uh, yeah. But the thing is is that at the same time, uh, our land is disappearing now faster than ever because now there is uh, all these like uh, things uh, i mean the main thing right now is wind parks but, but uh, the list can go on with mining and clear cutting of forests and whatever but uh, so the land so at the same time as they are destroying our land at a rate that is only accelerating at all the time yeah. They are saying that that uh, now is a good time to be Sami because now you can use your traditional clothing and you can play your music and it even played on Norwegian radio. Yeah. And but, but that what's is... even worse is that the culture is being destroyed through the land being taken. Yeah, so that that makes no sense. So, uh, like, uh, I'd say that things were a lot better a uh, hundred years ago when there was more, like, open races, because then we still had a lot of wild land where uh, that could support us, and uh, that was so big and vast that there was always space to be without... Uh, being in conflict with, with this invading uh, society. That is, that's crazy. I mean, it's interesting and it shows you how like much land preservation is, is important. I think for the first yeah. time in America, um, the National Park Service is sharing its duties uh, in, I think, in a in part of the Redwood National Forest with the Yurok tribe. The Yurok tribe is now helping manage uh, the national forest there. Um, and yeah, I mean, that comes to this whole this whole thing again, where where where's the line as far as like advancement? You know, it's like, <laughs> I mean, it's so wild because. Before I came there, I was like, green technology is is where we want the world to go. We want, you know, this this technology to, uh, yeah, we we want it, and and all of it is good. Uh, but then coming there and seeing how it's how disruptive it is to reindeer Sami culture, that was uh, that was kind of another mind bending fact. Uh, seen that so it's mm. like yeah where do we where do we draw the line between advancement and preservation of our beautiful cultures and and our relationship with the land yeah and i think that that brings us back to to this with um 
indigenousness. Yeah. Because uh, now we've been talking about uh, the the concept of losing indigenousness. Yeah. So um, on the other end, if you can lose your indigenousness, then uh, it should also be possible to uh, uh, find or uh, rediscover rediscover your indigenousness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that there is the answer to this question. Mm -hmm. Because um, uh, if uh, more people in general in the world would uh, rediscover their, uh, their own indigenousness, then uh, then the tables would be turned quite a lot. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it I feels so. It feels like one of the most important things in the world at this time is to. Yeah. Is, is the the world uh, needs to be saved by our rediscovering our relationship with this? I and and I do like I love that with as far as a uh, as an answer or a political answer in a way and to giving tribes a voice uh in decision making around this kind of thing you know like yeah I, I think people want it you know they 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 want to discover this a lot of people don't even know that that this that it's lost in a way it's so far from mm -hmm. from their consciousness um but uh that's, I feel like part of, that's part of my attempt at contributing to a new type of tourism in a way is this, is bringing more meaning to, to travel and, 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 and that is actually helping people find their indigenousness in a way. It's, it's crazy because I do local tours here in Salt Lake and we just have a half day tour to uh, an island in the Great Salt Lake. And um, we have so many people coming from Chicago or New York or Miami, you know, and and these people, have, a lot of them have never experienced silence like this, you know, <laughs> like you see. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's not even, right, the space to be able to, to listen to, to the earth in a way. And, uh, and I think that's one of the most powerful aspects of, of that tour is to just hear silence for once. <laughs> mm -hmm. Be free from a highway or a, or cars or the buzz, you know, of, of the refrigerator in your house, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, it's, it just feels so important. And so... So this uh and and back to the tourism thing like like I feel like as tourism is now it's 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 a, it's a very colonial construct you know like people are going to visit a place you know there's it's almost like a conquering you know you go and you're like I've been here and here and here and you know I've seen this and this and this and uh and people don't really a lot of people aren't interacting with local people, local tribes. I mean, it doesn't even have to be tribes, just local people. And um, they're just going to visit the sightseeing as if it was like on TV and then leaving, you know? And, and I think there can be such deeper meaning to travel by going to experience another person's way of life and their relationship with the land and respecting that and and helping and being a participant rather than just an observer have you guys seen the movie um my octopus teacher yeah i think yeah a lot of that it's a great movie if you haven't seen it um and part of my my philosophy of this comes from that you know like the 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 man that visits the same spot scuba or 
not even scuba diving, skin diving in the ocean uh, every day for a year and builds this relationship with this octopus. And then at the end of the movie, yeah, I mean, I don't think it ruins the movie by sharing his lesson, but that he was he was the he had become a participant in the life there, not just the observer. And and I think this uh, this form of travel is is how can really help people with that relationship. Um, yeah, not only to where they visit, but when they come back home, you know, what is there? What is your relationship with? the environment around you yeah it's, it's wild so maybe i had to be so lost <laughs> to uh to, to like refine this because i remember growing up not knowing the names of the trees or the plants outside of my house <laughs> really I, part of it was my family had moved from another state you know it's like i didn't we didn't even have that knowledge so so uh but it's it's, it's wild to think that i grew up that way so something was obviously missing. <laughs> uh, any other things that you've, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's a, maybe a good spot to wrap up. Any other questions for anybody? No. Well, yeah, like I said, uh, uh, I, I think, I, like I, said, I always love the conversations that we have. Uh, these are always amazing. And I'm glad that we got other people in to watch it as well. And uh, yeah, and uh, we are doing a trip up to uh, Sapmi in June, uh, from June 14th to the 25th. And finding this reconnection to our earth and it's so amazing we just have these discussions all day long <laughs> so <laughs> so uh i'll uh include a link uh to it if you guys want to learn more or or uh reach out to either me or jungle you know feel free and and uh it was great having you along so much love to everybody and uh We'll uh, finish it here today. Hopefully we have another one, another discussion again soon. So, yeah. Love you all. And uh, have a great Saturday evening, wherever you are. <laughs> Ciao for yeah. now.